Crafts. I'm Jessie Moon, your sister in the craft, and this is The Melting Pot. Today I'm very excited because I am sharing with you one of my favorite, very favorite spells to do. Um, it is incorporating nature magic. I was actually on Reddit the other night answering questions for other witches. It's just a great way to network, communicate with witches um, from all different experience range so I can learn and I can teach and it's just a really cool experience. So I was answering some questions and somebody had asked the question, what is a good thing for me to do with my flowers? Um, she, you know, a lot of witches know to dry their flowers when they're dying, um, but then you kind of collect this like plethora of dried flowers and <laughs> you may have more than you feel you could use or more than you know what to do with. Um, and I could give a whole list of things to do with those as well. But the focus of today's video, I'm actually, we're going to be doing some spell crafting here and I am going to show you how you can use still um, fresh or moist flowers um, to incorporate them into your spell work. What I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be turning um, our flowers into an ink or a dye and um, we are going to use them for sigil work and I'm going to talk about other things that you can do with this as well. It's a way of incorporating nature and all the elements into your craft and in my experience um, most of my spells that have been the most powerful for me, um, and I was just talking about this with a friend, some of, my, some of my most powerful experiences have come from a place of intuition, and this is one of those things. A few months ago, I had an abundance of flowers. Um, they, were, they had become too moist and almost kind of gooey. It was an iris and I left it in water to the point it become gooey. And you know, waste not, want not. That's what I'm always telling Journey. Oh, there's my kettle. One second, hold that thought. So as I was saying, I was telling, I'm always telling Journey, waste not, want not. I have these gooey flowers um, they're too far gone to dry, so what am I going to do with them? I decided that I was going to take them, they were very pigmented, and I was going to make a dye out of them. And I had a lot of luck with this. I used it in some sigils that um, came to be very powerful for me. And this is a spell that I really think witches from all different paths can enjoy um, and incorporate into their own crafts, so I really wanted to share it with you. So, and excuse me if there's a glare on my glasses, I was not feeling contacts today. The flowers do hold a lot of moisture in them, especially big flowers like lilies, irises, um, rosy, roses even sometimes. More of the cup-like flowers hold a lot of moisture in them, and so there's going to be a lot released in here. So you do not have to do this. This is just makes for an easier cleanup. The second thing that you're gonna need is some hot water. Um, I like to boil mine in my kettle and pour it over. I've also tried the method of um, kind of brewing them over the stove top, and that does work, but I will warn you, it does not smell florally in the way you would hope. It is kind of a pungent smell. So um, just beware if that's the approach you're gonna take. Hopefully you can see kind of okay of what's going on. Another thing that I forgot to mention is I like to infuse the water with some moon water before getting started to bless it and to say a blessing over the water. Water is a vessel so which is the whole purpose of moon water in itself. We can allow the moon water to act as a vessel to store the moon's energy for the the full moon's energy for the entire month long so while we do not have direct access to the full moon we can charge our water and then it becomes a vessel for this energy of the moon now when we um, use moon water to infuse other things it is then incorporating that lunar energy to charge whatever it is that you're working with water is a very intelligent substance it's an intelligent being and when it, science has shown when you speak things into water it has a direct reaction 
the water itself, when you freeze water that has been spoken to in a negative way, it has a different reaction to water that has been frozen after being spoken to in a positive way. So when we are blessing our water, we're infusing it first with moon water and then we're speaking blessings into it that is very powerful into our spell work. I find that um, spoken incantations that come from yourself are the most powerful. If you have a hard time coming up with them, you can find some online, but don't get too stuck on that. Charged here now by the light of the moon, in this hour I harness its power. So mode it's people. Just speaking those intentions into the water. That is a very big thing when doing spell work is speaking out the intentions. Um, I've lined my mortar and pestle here. You do not have to do this part. This is just something that I have begun to do because it's worked for me. Um, and I just kind of mix them up to release some of those juices in there. As you can see, it's already starting to release a lot of that pigment. some of the pigment. These were actually red and yellow lilies, so we'll see how they turn out. Just pour the hot water over. And you can see that it's already changed the color of the water to a deep dark purple so far. Um, out on some of the petals just kind of press down to release some more of the juices and set this out for 24 hours I like to go ahead and add my salt to it when it's warm because it helps it dissolve so we'll add a tablespoon of the salt that the vinegar already is bringing out more reds. It was a deep purple before, and then when I added the vinegar, it made it more of a red, which was the natural color of the flower. Now we're gonna allow this to sit overnight for 24 hours or roundabout, it doesn't have to be exact. Just give it about a full day to sit. You don't wanna forget about it um, because we have to then strain it out so we can get all the plant material out before we can use the dye. Um, or in this case, I will be using it more as like an ink. It will come out more like a watercolor, um, but I'll show you how I use it. You'll see, just stay tuned. So I will see you back here this time tomorrow. Until then.